can go ahead and finish the chart on your own, but I'm going to go ahead and show you here how you could do something that's really simple to help you avoid mistakes in your knitting. And this would be something that you can, can do in lace, in cable patterns, and in color work. It works everywhere. So we've finished a motif and we can just pretend in my sample that we've knitted the second purl round that, and that you finished the whole motif. And like me, you're looking at your sock and you're just admiring your work and you're saying, you know, that is really nice. What if I make a mistake later and I have to rip out? I want to make sure that I don't rip out past this part because this part's perfect. I love it. It looks good and I certainly don't want to do it again. It's okay to rip sometimes if we have a mistake that we can't fix, but we don't want to rip something unnecessarily. So I'm going to do what's called putting a lifeline in my knitting. And it's a really, really simple technique. You just take a thin yarn, thinner than what you're working with, in a nice contrasting color. This is a wool yarn. Um, cotton yarn works really nicely as well, maybe even a little bit nicer than a wool yarn because it's really easy to pull out later when you're finished with your knitting. And some people even use waxed dental floss for this technique. So whatever you have on hand is really okay. You just want something that's thinner than the yarn that's used for your knitting. And then we just thread it on a tapestry needle. And this is a fairly small tapestry needle. It's smaller than the needle that I would use to weave in the ends on this yarn. And the reason that I want a small needle is because I've got to fit this through the stitches that are on my needle. And so to add a lifeline, all I do is I take this strand of yarn on my tapestry needle and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it through every stitch on my needles. And I just go through one at a time. I want to be careful not to split the yarn I just want to go through the stitch just with the needle. And so sometimes you can get it through a few stitches at a time. And sometimes you can get it through a few stitches at a time and sometimes you might find that you get it through one stitch and you want to pull the yarn through because it's feeling kind of tight or unwieldy. There's no real right or wrong way to do that. Just get it through all the stitches on the needles and you go all the way around in this fashion. And what happens is that this creates a stopping point. Later on, if you make a mistake, you can just take your needles out and rip out your yarn and it will not unravel any further than where you're putting this thread in. So that way you can relax about ripping out in the future because you know that you've protected the part of the knitting that you finished that you think looks good. Now don't take your needle out when you're done. We're only going to do that in an emergency if we have to rip further along. But for now, we're going to leave it in. And there's just one more thing I want to remind you of or tell you about in this case. And that is, if you still have your markers outside your pearl bumps, and remember, I took mine out because I think the pearls themselves make a nice marker. You can see it now that I have a whole repeat done. You can see more clearly how that pearl section is really visible between the sections of knit stitches. But if you have your marker still in there, do not put the lifeline through the marker because then you won't be able to move the marker up to the next row when you get along. It will get stuck on this row in your knitting and that defeats the purpose of having the stitch markers. And so this technique I like a lot for lace because when you're ripping out lace, when you have all those yarn overs in some parts of the patterning, it can be very difficult to get your stitches back on the needle. And you might lose stitches or drop yarn overs or forget to pick them up onto the needle. And this lace pattern has some plain rows in it and this section with the pearls and plain knit rows in between it is a very nice place to rip out to even if you don't have a lifeline because you just have plain stitches to put back on the needles. But on some 
lace patterns, you don't have a resting row like that. And so if you have to rip out it all, it can be really, really scary if you don't have a lifeline to help you keep your place. And the same thing goes for color work. Because you have different color stitches in different positions on your needle, and in the back of your work you have the stranding of the colors, if you have to rip out, it can be somewhat difficult to maintain the order of the stitches and not to have some stitches of one color or another unravel. So using a lifeline in the color work is also a very nice technique to help you avoid mistakes in the future. But that's really all there is to it. You just go all the way around back to the beginning. And I've got a piece of yarn that's just a little bit longer than my knitting is around in circumference. So just to be safe, I'm going to just tie a couple knots in it so it doesn't slip out while I'm knitting. If you make a longer lifeline, you can just leave the tails there. It doesn't really matter because when your sock is finished, you're just going to take this out anyway. It's just a temporary safe haven for peace of mind.